Starship Booster 7 prepares to go scorched Earth on Earth. Polaris Dawn gets into the paraporn business. Starlink increases its flock some more, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Over the weekend, SpaceX swapped out one of Booster 7's Raptor engines prior to its upcoming record-breaking 33-engine static fire. Eagle-eyed viewers of Lab Padre noting it was engine 105 that was replaced by 24. But that wouldn't be the only dingleberry removed from under the skirt. A few days later, on Wednesday, a second Raptor was removed and replaced. And that must have been it, because after that, the lift was taken away. Elon was there, back in Starbase on Monday, checking in on the situation, tweeting his departure from Booster 7 after picking up her skirt. As last Friday's episode was published, news broke that SpaceX's own Bill Gerstenmaier passed along that the company was aiming to fire her engines up this week, but that they had a lot to get done first. Well, obviously, B7 static fire didn't end up happening, as all scheduled road closures were canceled, but next week is looking possible. Thinking back to last week's video, the booster's upper half, Starship 24, was unexpectedly diverted to the rocket garden. But it has since been confirmed that this is indeed temporary as workers finish preparing her for her first orbital flight attempt, removing her lift point hook ends and covering the gaps left over with tiles. She won't return to the launch site until after B7's big boom image is finished. In other SpaceX news, the crew of Polaris Dawn, the company's first of three crewed missions to prepare for manned Starship flights in the future, have completed the next phase of their training, Schutzbra, each of them taking the basic free-fall parachute course at the Air Force Academy to provide them with valuable practice in making rapid, high-stakes decisions, completing it with their first solo jumps. Bro, jumping over Colorado in January had to suck. I did a winter jump once over Ohio, and that was enough to keep me on the ground until spring. Snot sickles, brah. Brah! In other Dragon news, the crew of Demo 2, Bob and Doug, who launched aboard the first crewed Dragon capsule in May of 2020, were awarded the Congressional Space Medal of Honor for their participation in the world's first commercial space flight. The ceremony went viral, not because of the astronauts, but because Harris opened her mouth, of course. And then, they launched. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I'll pay you a dollar to shut up. On Tuesday's not foggy at all morning, Falcon 9 lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base on the west coast, carrying a flock of 49 Starlink satellites plus one hitchhiker, deorbits eclectic Alina payload to LEO. This was the seventh mission for the first stage of the rocket, and it landed with a flawless feed on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship stationed in the Pacific Ocean. There we can see the landing burn has begun for the first stage, targeting a landing on our drone ship. Of course I still love you. Stage one landing leg deploy. All payloads were deployed successfully. Then on early Thursday morning, a second Starlink mission for the week took off from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, hoisting 53 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. It's hard to see back there, but Starship's East Coast Tower's chopsticks have been installed. The booster flew for its fifth time and landed on a shortfall of Gravitas on the Atlantic without tipping. Not even 20%. Nearly 70% of all Falcon 9 missions have been completed by flight-proven boosters. Rocket reusability is key to enabling SpaceX's rapid launch cadence. Oh, and the birds were also released on time. Coming up on Sunday, we have the launch of the Amazonas Nexus ComSat aboard Falcon. And we'll go live for that one on Rumble, so use the link in the description below to subscribe and join us. But meow, it's time for today's honorable mention. <laughs> Rolls-Royce recently tweeted a render of their proposed space micronuclear reactor designed for future missions to other planets and moons. According to their website, in 2021, the company signed an innovative contract with the UK Space Agency for a study into future nuclear power options for space exploration. They've already built a small-scale prototype demonstrator of the space reactor and plan on having the first one ready to send to the moon by 2029. Just last month here in the States, NASA announced they're working with DERPA, to design and demo an operational nuclear thermal propulsion rocket by 2027. Well, that's all for this one. Thanks for checking in. Not of respect to those of you supporting the channel. Check out our locals community if the rest of you wish to join us. And every week over the years, many of you have kindly reached out, commented and inquired if I'm doing all right. And I appreciate you for watching my six. And I'm actually doing better than ever. So thank you so much for asking. 
Earlier this week, I released a video on my personal channel, Cloud Liquor, explaining in detail what happened during my psychedelic trip to Mexico for PTSD. So definitely give that a watch. It's a mind blowing story I have to tell that goes way beyond scientific explanation. And I made it for you guys. Have a nominal weekend and until next Friday, Godspeed. Thank <laughs> you.